I've seen some indie game developers that have never done any kind of debugging in their entire lives, which is crazy. So in this video, I'm going to talk about debugging. So here I have my default console app. I'm just going to declare some ints and floats. So int, again, let's say you have something like HP and float, some float value. Could be anything, 1.234. The least you should do is press F9 and run the debugger. What this means is that we've set up a breakpoint here. You see the arrow and we're able to run our code line by line. We can see that we have 120 for our HP value and for float, we haven't run this line yet. So this value is uninitialized. If I press F10, go to the next line and then we see 1.234. Also remember from video number two that floats are an approximation of real numbers. So instead of 1.234, we get something that is very close to a 1.234. Anyways, let me just show you the process one more time. I'm going to press continue. Here's our app. I'm going to set up a breakpoint here this time. Run the debugger. And we stop here on this line. You can see that we have not initialized any of our values. And as I go through the code, by pressing F10, we've initialized HP. Press F10 one more time, and we have now the value in our float. Another common way of debugging, if you go to Debug, Windows, Watch, I'm going to open this window. And I can type in our variable names, HP. You see the value here. Let me also type some float and you see 1.3, something very close to 1.234. Let me also show you this window, debug, windows, memory. This time I'm going to type ampersand HP. Let me change this to fours. Also right click and make sure that we have hexadecimals. If you've watched video number two, you would know that this address is some sort of a hexadecimal number. And in hexadecimals, 78 means 120. When you're coding, ampersand can mean many different things. But in this video, just understand that when I say ampersand HP, we're referring to the address of our variable HP. And remember our app from video number one. Let's run a little experiment here. I'm going to exit the debugger. And I'm going to say 3.14 for our float. For our int, I'm going to say 1,078,523,331. Set up a breakpoint, F9, and I'm going to run this again. Okay, I'm going to type ampersand HP. I'm going to bring out the calculator. Make sure it's at programmer and hex. You have to read this backwards. So 40, 48, F5, C3. And then for our decimals, you'll see that the values match. Also for our binary, it's hard to see, but it's the exact same match. And again, if you remember video number one, first let me type ampersand some float and see the value, it's the exact same match. If I go back to my app, this certain combination of ones and zeros, if you interpret this in an int, means 1 billion something. For a float, it means 3.14. So for anything that I've said previously, you can run your own experiment, debug it, and actually see what it's like in your memory. By debugging and seeing what your data looks like is probably a lot more intuitive than trying to understand the human being that is describing this in some English words. Let me give you one more example. I'm going to create something called an array. And let's say you have something like attack combinations. And I'm going to say there's five sequences starting from zero or I'll start at one two, three, four, five. Let's just pretend that one 
is a jab, two is a straight, left or right, whatever, three is a hook, four, a bite, five, headbutt. Let's just pretend. According to our book, part one, chapter two, types, arrays, Arrays are sequences of identically typed variables. Array types include the contained type and the number of contained elements. Like I said, words can be very confusing, but let's run the debugger again. I'm going to press F9 at the end and run this. Oops. This time I'm going to type ampersand attack combinations zero, meaning the first element of the array. Even if you don't understand exactly what the book is talking about, if we run the debugger, we see that we have five elements, all with four bytes, starting from DC, E0, E4, E8, EC, and you also see the values, one, two, three, four, five. So you can literally see that every int is taking up four bytes of memory, and an array is nothing more than a literal sequence of a certain data type. I don't think Unity or C-sharp allows you to see memory addresses, but if you're not debugging your own game, you're pretty much flying blind. I've seen many Unity users randomly changing values, and if it sort of works, they just move on and build other stuff on top. If you do that without debugging, you're going to end up with bugs on bugs on bugs on bugs. What I have in my video is an oversimplification, but please get into the habit of debugging and understanding what your data looks like. Your homework assignment, try debugging ints and int arrays yourself. Also try other data types. Try debugging and see whether the data matches exactly what you have in your mind. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.